right, just a, a quick update on a couple of cases out of the U.S. Supreme Court involving Illinois' gun and magazine ban. And uh, let's go ahead and check out the uh, the latest where you've got the uh, Naperville plaintiffs uh, filing a response to the state's response in this case. Uh, so if we pull this up and go to the U.S. Supreme Court's docket entry, uh, it's real simple to find, guys. Just search the official U.S. Supreme Court website, go to case documents, docket search, and then you can search for Illinois, for Dan Calkins, for National Association for Gun Rights, and you'll be able to find these cases uh, and read the documents yourself. And I think that that's always important. But uh, go through and you'll look at the timeline of when this was docketed uh, and that uh, Justice Amy Coney Barrett's the one overseeing the Seventh Circuit. So uh, she's uh, ultimately the one handling these types types of motions in the U.S. Supreme Court uh, gave the state a December 5th deadline uh, to file uh, or December 6th deadline rather to file uh, by 5 p.m. Eastern time that did come in and the states essentially spelled out why they think the uh, the plaintiffs are wrong in this. And again, this is the case that started in the Northern District against just Naperville late last year and after the states enacted the gun and magazine ban on um, uh, d January 10th of this year, uh, then you had lawsuits filed uh, challenging the state's ban. But that Naperville case was already on the books, so they just amended their case to include the state ban, challenging the ban. So this case has been furthest along. Um, and while it did get lumped in together with uh, appeals process in the Seventh Circuit, where they're still waiting on a uh, decision on an en banc review, but that's not guaranteed. So while they wait for that en banc review, they went ahead and went to the U.S. Supreme Court, and Justice Amy Coney Barrett told the state to respond. The state did respond, and uh, you know we've looked at this before, but just to kind of refresh your memory here, uh, they claim that the state's not showing the courts likely to grant certs. They say that the state, uh, the plaintiffs, have not shown that uh, they're being, uh, you know, irreparably harmed, uh, that uh, they are entitled to relief, uh, and goes through a, a myriad of other arguments. But the plaintiffs in this case did file a reply yesterday. Uh, and uh, that reply, uh, we'll take a look here in, in just uh, a quick review, uh, but uh, clearly, you know, they, they spell it out in the table of contents. Uh, the court grants relief in appropriate interlocutory cases, saying that uh, this is appropriate for the U.S. Supreme Court to intervene and give an injunction, uh, clearly before the January 1st deadline. That's what they're seeking. We'll see what happens. But uh, they also go and talk about how the state cannot reconcile its handgun ban in the Heller decision, which was about the right of people to keep and bear arms, handguns in particular. Uh, they go on to argue that uh, there's no limit um, principle of the state's arguments. The state's arguments amounts to backdoor means and scrutiny. That's where you've got the idea that, uh, you know, they've, they've got the means to do this and uh, to protect the public. And uh, that's how they're going to try to, you know, uh, ultimately uh, advance gun control measures. Uh, it goes on to say that uh, the state's history and tradition uh, is uh, their analysis of the, of the text and history and tradition fails. Uh, they say that uh, the state's military weapon argument's meritless. Uh, they go on to discuss how the magazines are covered by the Second Amendment and a whole host of other things. All right, so uh, be sure to go read that for yourself. So the, the Beavis plaintiffs have filed a response in the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, what the next steps are uh, have not been published, so we'll see what happens. Uh, again, uh, that was just filed yesterday afternoon. Uh, so that's going to be interesting to watch, but that's not the only U.S. Supreme Court case that we're watching here. We've also got the Supreme Court case of Calkins v. Pritzker. And this one's uh, interesting because it's not just about the gun ban and registry that was going through the state courts. Got all the way to the Illinois Supreme Court. This the Supreme Court in Illinois ruled against the plaintiffs. So this obviously deals with the Second Amendment question, advancing the arguments that uh, you have uh, equal protection violations by carving out police and retired police and security guards and prison wardens saying that they can have these banned firearms, but the public can't. Uh, so they've got that argument in there. But uh, they also have the arguments in front of the U.S. Supreme Court about conflicts of interest. And if you look here. After it was docketed last month, uh, the states waived their rights to give a response. You then had a supplemental briefing that uh, the, the attorneys for uh, Calkins filed at the U.S. Supreme Court that raised even more questions about the millions of dollars in campaign contributions that leaders of the two legislative branches, the legislative and the executive branch, gave to the third branch of government's candidates for uh, the judiciary. So the, the, the arguments that they've 
hamstring are, are that of uh, conflicts of interest and uh, lack of due process and, and so on. So after that filing, uh, Justice Amy Coney Barrett distributed the case to the U.S. Supreme Court for when they have a conference January 5th. Uh, so while we talked about those updates before, uh, I do have indication that uh, the, 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 uh, the plaintiffs here are going to um, essentially uh, file a, and they have filed, they're just waiting for it to be published, uh, but this is a stay that uh, the uh, plaintiffs are looking to ultimately put in place. So this is a new emergency application for stay in joining enforcement of assault weapons, partial ban pending final dis disposition of the case. Uh, and this is directed uh, to the uh, the Justice Amy Coney Barrett, uh, Associate Justice of the United States Supreme Court and Chief Justice for the Seventh Circuit. So uh, Stock's filing this and ultimately they uh, they ask for uh, a stay uh, and they, they, they push for uh, the, the Supreme Court to step in and uh, ultimately stay the law while the, uh, the lawsuit continues. Let's just take a look at their table of contents. They've got uh, you know summary of the case, the grounds that are presented, 14th Amendment due process grounds. They've also got uh, saying the Supreme Court swept away federally protected Second Amendment rights affecting all citizens of Illinois uh, and uh, harm to law-abiding citizens from enforcement during pendency of review. They spell that out uh, and they, stay, they say that a stay is proper uh, by the instant application. So uh, just a couple of uh, updates there. You've got the Naperville case where the plaintiffs have responded to the states. We haven't seen where that's going to go quite yet. The Calkins case has already been distributed to conference, but now they've got a pending um, uh, stay motion and it hasn't been published on the U.S. Supreme Court page. So we'll see what happens there. But I did get uh, a copy of it uh, that, uh, that that we expect to be published. So we may have to delve a little bit deeper into that and actually talk with uh, Jerry Stock some more about uh, what that case ultimately means. So uh, just a couple of brief updates uh, this uh, Friday morning with Bishop on air on the latest uh, status for uh, the gun and magazine ban. All right, we've got tons more to get to uh, here with Bishop on air. Be sure to like, subscribe and follow along. Hit that notification bell for updates as we uh, produce those daily.